What's up everybody? I hope you're doing good. It's a beautiful day. I'm a little bit tired today, but I love you because I love you. I have to be there for you. I know many of you come every single day to try to watch me. I even spoke to somebody the other day that told me that they come back twice a day to watch my videos. That's incredible. So there's just no way I can drop you, right? Thank you very much for stopping by. You are very much appreciated. South Africa, Zimbabwe, Mauritius. Thank you so much, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania. Thank you very much. You're very much appreciated. Malawi, Botswana, Lesotho, United Kingdom, Sierra Leone, I see you, Jamaica, Trinidad, Tobago. Thank you very, 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 very much. Okay, so this is your first time. Uh, feel free, please join us so we can make ourselves bigger and let all do this now so we can start the video. Great, you join us, subscribe, number one, number two. Good. So today we're talking about something very interesting. Again, uh, we all know that Africans were to Russia a few days ago for a summit that was very interesting. Many things were said. We're going to try to get a little bit of what's happened. I know many of us know that Africans went to Russia for a summit, but the briefing, we didn't get what actually happened in general. Okay, so number one, first, Vladimir Putin has written off $23 billion debt burden of African countries. Yeah. When things are bad, we complain. When things are good, you need to clap. Okay, let's clap again. Thank you very much. $23 billion written off by Vladimir Putin. This is debt. African nations have towards Russia. So we had to pay the debts. Putin said, okay, you know what, fellas? Let me show you that I'm not a bad person. $23 billion. You can forget about it. Okay? Forget about it. Invest whatever money you have in your country, your infrastructure, make your lives better. That's what I want to see. So in reality, many African countries are indebted. Yeah. We owe a lot of money to World Bank and IMF. I don't know why. I really don't know why. But we owe them money, supposedly. In 2010, Sub-Saharan African countries debt stood around $305 billion. The region has more debt than it can pay. And the most indebted countries are the following. Angola, Djibouti, Mozambique, Rwanda, Sudan, Tanzania, Zambia, Cabo Verde, Mauritius, and Seychelles. These are some of the most indebted African countries. We all owe a lot of money to these entities, more money than we can pay. So the reality is they borrow you money for whatever infrastructure you want to do, whatever development you want to do. But when you are unable to pay the money you owe them with interest, they come into your country and they claim things. They can claim minerals, they can claim gold, they can claim lithium, they can claim uranium, they can claim diamond. So it's okay to go ask for debt to develop your country, but just be ready to pay the money. Unfortunately, the formulation they have made within this date does not allow you to pay the money back. So you are stranded. But Russia says, you know what, fellas, you owe me $23 billion. You can keep it. Build your house. Get a car for your grandma. You know, get some uh, macaroni cheese. <laughs> if you guys eat macaroni cheese. <laughs> we don't eat macaroni cheese. We eat pap, pap or fufu. Ugali. Huh? That's what we eat. Anyway, Putin says Russia was advocating expansion of representation of African country in the United Nations Security Council and other United Nations structures. So basically, fellas, there are five countries that are part of the United Nations Security Council. These countries are favorized. They are, they perceive themselves as super countries. The United States of America, France, Great Britain, China, and Russia. These are the people that decide. So if a country has to be bombed by the United Nations, these five countries only can say yes. The other countries countries are like you know sub you don't mean anything you're like you're just a country <laughs> you really don't mean nothing only those five countries can decide for the world and some african presidents including the ex-zimbabwean president robert mugabe were asking why africans cannot be part of the security council and russia says they have been pushing for africa to be accepted like, i don't understand why we need to be accepted like are we not human beings enough like we need to do what so we can be respect i know I, I don't i don't understand russia and africa strive to develop cooperation in all areas and strengthen honest open control constructive partnership. Partnership should be honest, constructive, equal, not we the boss, we telling you what to do. And according to Putin, reopening of embassies of Burkina Faso and Equatorial Guinea is going to be good. So what happened is what? Russia's embassy in Burkina Faso was closed. Same as Guinea. Because at the time, the president of both Guinea and Burkina Faso were pro-West. They didn't like the Russians very much. That was the reason why they closed those embassies and completely destroyed the trade that they had as countries. Vladimir Putin said that sovereignty was not a one-time achieved state. It must be constantly protected. Is he right or wrong? Sovereignty is not a one-time achieved state. You may think that you're free, but in reality, whoever frees you tries however he can to get you back into slavery. So sovereignty is not a one-time thing. You must 
constantly fight for it. Putin also offered assistance to Africa in countering threats such as terrorism, piracy, and transnational crime, adding that it would continue to train personnel from African countries. So he's offering his help against terrorism, piracy, and other things. I feel like it's good to offer help against terrorism, but terrorism must end, okay? And this help must be very well structured. You're coming from the 1st to the 30th. On the 30th, you must leave and reapply for another contract. Not to be coming here to stay until we want to go, then we go. Then that's a big problem. Because what if they come to Africa and they say, you know what, uh, we're not going back to Russia. We do not want to be slaves of the East anyway. So as much as we don't want to be slaves of the West, we do not want to be slaves of the East either. We want to be free. We want to be able to make our own decisions. We want to work with partners that can help us move forward. We Africans would like to work with partners that are transparent and willing to help us move forward. But we don't want to be slaves of the Russians either. Putin said Moscow will allow Gets an additional 90 million dollars for development in Africa. 90 million dollars. Is it a good thing? It's a good thing. But should we depend on this? Absolutely not. Africans should stop being beggars. We appreciate the offer. We appreciate the gain. We appreciate the money. Because the bottom line is most of the time when they send money to Africa for development, what happens? Your uncles take that money and they use it for their own purposes. We know that. They don't use that money to build the hospitals. They don't use the money to build roads. In fact, some of the time, they'll take a little bit of the money and build the road, the road that never finished. They never finished the work. They use the rest of the money to enrich themselves and enrich their families. So Africa do not need donations. Africans need honesty in the trade, great value, and revolutionary people. Weapons. So Russia is offering weapons to African nations. Very interesting. According to Burkina Faso interim president, Ibrahim Traore, Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, is willing to provide weapons free of charge to African nations. In a conversation with Sputnik on Monday, Traore discussed the support received from Russia, emphasizing that Putin was extremely generous and offered unrestricted assistance in supplying the necessary weaponry to combat terrorism in the African nation. So it's good to see that. He says there are no restrictions. They do not refuse licenses to us, and it is at good price. Russia is also ready to deliver weapons to us for free. So you buy the weapons. Obviously, Mr. Traore is a soldier. You know, he thinks a lot about weapons. And obviously, Africa needs weapons to defend itself. Again, fellas, it's good to see Russia coming forward with an offer saying we're going to erase your $23 billion debt of no need to pay us anymore. It's a good thing because most of the time, Chinese don't do that. Okay, Chinese give you stuff. You build your stuff. You do your project. If you're not able to finish your project, you still need to pay the money. If you don't pay the money, they're going to take the port. They don't play. Like they took the port in... Uh, in Asia. Same thing they tried to do in Tanzania. They had a project to build a port with Tanzania. Tanzania was not able to pay the money and the Chinese almost took the port. They were lucky because at the time, President Magufuli did not allow it. But Russia comes forward and say, you know what? Keep the $23 billion. We know African countries owe a lot of money to World Bank. Who owns the World Bank? Who owns the World Bank? That's a big question. How can a bunch of individuals have more money than countries? What kind of society do we live in? Why don't people ask the right questions? So countries have no money. They have to go borrow at some entity named World Bank. Who owns the World Bank? Who create the money from World Bank? that you all need to build your countries, your roads, your hospitals and stuff. You must ask the right questions. Why do they have the right to print that money and give it value while we don't have the right to do it in our own countries? Doesn't make any sense. Okay, fellas, thank you very much for being part of this. I appreciate you. Let me know how you feel about this. I know there's a lot of intelligent people here who understand economics and many other things. No, don't get scared away. Let us know how you feel. How can Africa progress? Can we build Africa with donations? It's always European countries giving to Africa. It's always America giving to Africa. Now Russia giving to Africa. But we all know that Africa has the most riches in the world. How come we have the most riches, the most gold, the most lithium, the most uranium, the most diamond, but we are the one that have to beg? Doesn't make any sense. Is Russia better than the West? Big question. I want to know from you. Or should we be afraid and stay on our guard and remain free forever? God bless.